This week on Maker Update, a desktop air tester, a drill press table lift, art from particle collisions, working with black and white TVs, EL Neon, and diffraction finishes for 3D prints. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another episode of Maker Update. I hope you're all doing well. I've been keeping busy with a speaker upgrade for my van, and I'm happy to report everything went back together smoothly and sounds great, but it was a new kind of DIY thrill for me to get in there and pop the panels off. Anyway, I got a great show for you, so let's get started with the project of the week. Over on Instructables, our old friend Jonatron dropped a masterclass for taking your project from prototype to production. His example is this gorgeous air quality detecting desk lamp he created as a project for attendees of the Autodesk University Conference. The goal was to showcase how Autodesk tools like Eagle for circuit board design and Fusion 360 for hardware design can work together to streamline manufacturing. His guide here goes over all the different stages of his design. He includes the downloadable files for the enclosure and a link to the open source schematic and bill of materials needed to make the air quality sensor board, which was designed by Taylor Sharp from SweetSense. Essentially, it's using an Adafruit Itsy Bitsy running Arduino code to translate data from the sensor into color values for the LED ring. It's a project you could put together for under $100 if you can live without the beautifully milled aluminum enclosure and the custom circuit board for neatly mounting the off-the-shelf boards on. It's a great piece by John, and so cool to see the lines blurred between project-making skills and product-making skills. Now for some news. Almost a month ago exactly, I reported to you about the closing of Maker Media, the parent company behind Make Magazine, Maker Fair, Maker Shed, and Makezine.com. This week, I learned that the company's founder, Dale Doherty, has created a new company called Make Community LLC that has purchased some of the assets of Maker Media. It remains to be seen how it will all work, but I'm excited to see that there's still hope for the future of Make. And if you haven't heard about Project Egress, Adam Savage and the National Air and Space Museum have enlisted a team of talented makers to create a life-size replica of the Apollo 11 command module hatch. The entire piece will be assembled live next week on July 18th, so don't miss it. Now for more projects. Check it. On Make Something, David Picciuto has this fantastic guide on how he created a motorized lift for his drill press table. Not only does this eliminate the hassle of locking and cranking the table up and down, but it also gave him a chance to make this super swank CNC cut wood table for it with T-tracks on it and an aluminum face plate on the front with switches and dials to operate the lift. Super cool. I also caught this write-up of an incredible interactive artwork called Halo by a design firm called Semiconductor. The installation uses light projection and the amplified sound of 384 wires vibrated by individual solenoids to produce this sensory experience that people can walk through. What's especially cool is that the lights and sounds are the interpreted data from the Atlas particle detector at the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. It's an incredibly intricate piece, but such a cool blend of art and science and engineering. If you're looking for a geeky Halloween costume, check out this Doc Brown mind-reading helmet from Back to the Future made by Marcin Poblaki. Aside from all the 3D printed parts here, and there's a lot of them, each node has an LED wired in, and they're all controlled by a single Arduino Nano. You can find the 3D files and the Arduino code all on Thingiverse. Finally, for those of you who've been following my saga of Billy Bass hacks, I've got a new guide up with the help of Jordan Bunker that shows how to modify any big mouth Billy Bass talking toy fish to respond to any Bluetooth audio source. It's a great guide that can be adapted to all kinds of toy hacks, so check it out. Now for some tips and tools. Have you ever seen an old black and white TV and thought about how it would be awesome to hook it up to a modern HDMI video source like a Roku? Well, that's exactly what artist Josh Ellingson did. He tweeted the results and it went viral. Well, now he's got a post up on his blog showing you exactly what combination of cables and converters he's using to get the job done. This same technique can be used to output a Raspberry Pi to an old TV, either over the HDMI output or the headphone jack composite output. If you're my age or older, most of these components will look familiar, but to millennials, this is apparently black magic. I also had a chance to talk with Josh for a Cool Tools video and discuss the embroidery machine he uses to experiment with designing his own patches. If that's something you've ever wanted to explore, this will either inspire you 
or put you off the idea entirely because it's kind of an ordeal. While watching David Picciuto's motorized drill press table, I bookmarked this all-in-one motor speed controller he's using to make it work. For $13, it works with a wide range of voltages and includes a pre-wired reverse switch and potentiometer for adjusting the speed. Seems like a handy drop-in solution for working with DC motors. For working with servos, Dan Kitchen has an invention he calls Servo Socks that he's funding on Indiegogo with only a few days left. They're an enclosure of HDPE plastic that you can place your servo in that can be drilled and shaped and glued. It looks like a handy thing to have for prototyping. Sarah Petkiss has a great guide on her technique for building fake neon signs with EL wire. You can see how she makes a reference sketch. She traces it in Illustrator and then takes it into Fusion 360 to create a backing plate for the design. The real trick is how it gets studded with all these little 3D printed fasteners that she created to hold the wire to the backing like a standoff. It's a fascinating process and I suspect it could be adapted to that new breed of side lit LED neon rope. Another great new technique that's been making the rounds is this idea of 3D printing to diffraction grading sheets to give your 3D prints a shimmery rainbow finish. From what I can tell, the technique was first demonstrated by maker and costume designer David Shorey, but over on Adafruit, the Ruiz brothers have a step-by-step -step guide that walks you through the process and provides some useful tips. Finally, on Gareth Branwin's Tips, Tools, and Shop Tales newsletter, he's got another tip from Bob Netzger on molding with styrene a directed tip on how to know when a ball valve is closed, why every maker needs a step drill bit, and even the best practice for layering your hamburger. Check it out. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out this video from the Another Teaching Moment series on how to understand the differences between different types of relay switches. Relays allow you to take low voltages that are common to hobby electronic projects and use them to switch on and off higher voltages like household AC, or even just higher DC voltages like motor voltages that you want separate from your circuit. This video walks you through both common and the more exotic types of relays out there. It also goes over some of the basic anatomy of those designs. It's worth a look. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know you're out there. You can also get on the Maker Update email newsletter to get show notes emailed out to you automatically every week with a few bonus projects thrown in. And a huge thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for making this show possible. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.